Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about investor protection and I think this is a huge, huge and important subject to talk about. So in this video, we're going to talk about is your investment protected? Like where your money is sitting right now, if the company that manages it takes off to the Bahamas with your money, are you protected? Is there any legal action you can take? And would you get your money back? We're gonna cover that off, as well as a story about a famous person named Bernie Madoff. A lot of you have this concern because of Bernie Madoff. Now, Bernie Madoff wasn't the first, and I guarantee you he won't be the last. So how do you protect yourself? We'll cover that in this video. Just a reminder, if you haven't checked out our investing academy, we'll put a link below. Check that out. Great resource for everything, investing, financial planning, taxes, mortgages, all of that. $19.99 a month. You cannot beat that price point. As well as fee-for-service financial planning. If you're getting close to retirement, maybe you're in retirement, or you're just at a point in life where you have no idea what's going on and you need some clarity around your financial picture, uh, we offer fee-for-service financial planning. Again, we'll put a link below to that. Parallelwealth.com slash planning. So let's quickly talk about Bernie Madoff. Now, Bernie Madoff, probably 99% of you have heard his name uh, because he defrauded investors of upwards of what they say, $64.5 billion, billion with a B. You know, when the regulatory bodies came in and kind of did the digging, they figured there's about 18 billion, something like that. And they say most of it was actually recovered and paid back to investors. The stories that I've read from the investor side of things, not quite the case. So he ran a Ponzi scheme, they call it, for many, many years. And what happened in 2008 and into 2009 when he got uh, charged and he got charged with 150 years in jail, at the end of the day, he defrauded millions of people out of billions of dollars. People like that have really hurt my industry and the investing industry. They've broken that trust. Who do I trust anymore? How do I know my money's protected? And you know, a lot of times when I talk to people on the phone looking for a financial plan or for an investing option, you know, I'll say, you know, we offer fee for service plans. We have some investment firms that, you know, I've done my due diligence with and, you know, we have clients and even my own personal money invested with. I don't recommend these firms. One of them is BCV Asset Management. I've had Chris from BCV on the channel many times. Clients say, yeah, but Adam, I've never heard of BCV. Like, who are they? How, how do I know Chris or someone in their office won't run away with my money? The reality is, is your money isn't held with them. You're just giving them trading authorization on your account. BCV holds your money at National Bank. National Bank or NBIN uh, is the custodian of your money. And every investment firm has to use a custodian in Canada. So if you're writing a check to, you know, Adam Bourne Investment Corp directly, that's the red flag. So how do we kind of look for red flags? Where is your money held? Who are you writing the check to or who are you transferring the money to? To me in the industry, that's the biggest telltale sign. So if you're sending money to a company that doesn't seem legit, if there's no, again, custodian or protector of that money behind there, you want to maybe rethink that investment. So I always tell clients, look, if something happened to me, if something happened to BCV and their team of 50 plus staff, your money's still invested in the individual blue chip dividend paying stocks and it's still safe at National Bank. People still get swindled out of millions of dollars every single year in Canada. It's still a huge, huge problem. And I'm sure a lot of you watching this video have a story like this. And if you do, leave a comment below. We'd love to hear your story. Share it with others so that others don't fall into the same trap you do. Because I hear these stories all the time. And we had a client that we worked with not too long ago. They were invested in a real estate mortgage type of investment. It went sideways and they lost, you know, well into six figures. Now do your due diligence. Make sure that, you know, if you're investing in in a real estate project like who's holding your money what's the protection what could go wrong what's the downside what's the upside do your due diligence on any type of investment and if you don't feel comfortable with it I wouldn't get into it. The second part of that is you know have a plan like a lot of people that we come across are taking a huge amount of risk in their investment portfolios when we can build a plan and show them that like a five, maybe even a 4% rate of return, it's going to you know meet their needs, income needs for retirement. Sure, we all want our money to grow faster, grow bigger, all of that. But there is this balance, especially as you get close to retirement of how much risk do you need to take versus how much risk you currently are taking. So I want to talk about the Canadian Investor Protection Fund, CIPF. So most investment firms that trade in stocks or equities are part of CIPF, or they offer their clients part of the Canadian Investor Protection Fund. And that provides kind of insurance. So if something happened to that company or, or you know investment, that CIPF fund is there to protect you. So the CIPF provides limited protection for property held by a member firm on behalf of an eligible client. 
if the member firm becomes insolvent. Member firms are investment dealers that are members of IROC, so the Investment Industry Regulatory Organization of Canada, and most investment firms are. So that's kind of maybe the first place to check. If you're investing in stocks, equities, that kind of stuff, are they an IROC member? If they're part of IROC, then they will most likely you know, 99% of the time will be part of CIPF. We'll put the link below to the Canadian Investor Protection Fund and you can click uh, on there and then you can actually search member firms. So you can see like where I'm invested, am I part of CIPF? You can search that, figure that out and make sure you are. And if you're not part of CIPF, there are a few other organizations in Canada. Again, do a bit of research, figure out are you protected or not? or not. So CIPF protects investors from insolvency of the firm. So if you're invested with a firm and they go insolvent, then CIPF kicks in and it covers you up to a million dollars. Now, again, it covers you for missing property. So this is property held by a member firm on your behalf that is not returned to you following the firm's insolvency. Missing property can include cash, securities, futures contracts, and segregated insurance funds. So those are you know, the four things that are covered there. So if they become insolvent, and you don't get return those, then there's that protection there for you. Now, how often does CIPF come into play? Not often, but it's sure nice to have that insurance. It's kind of like your house insurance, right? How many of you have claimed on house insurance? At least a big claim. Maybe you've had a small flood or something like that. You made a small claim. But how many of you have made a big claim on your house insurance? Some of you have definitely fires or whatever it is. We have some clients that uh, lived uh, in BC where the forest fires came through and they had their homes wiped out. Obviously you have insurance for those events. It's a small percentage that actually have to trigger those events, but when they do, you're sure glad you have your insurance. That's the kind of the mindset you have to have with CIPF. Again, it doesn't cost you anything per se, it's built in uh, kind of in the background as protection. So there's four criteria to qualify for CIPF protection. And the first one is you need to be a client or have an account with a member firm that is disclosed in the records of the firm. So you need to be an investor or account holder at a IROC firm. Secondly, the member firm has become insolvent. So that's the second criteria. The third is the firm as a result of its insolvency has failed to return or account for property it was holding on your behalf. And the fourth thing is you're not considered ineligible for coverage under CIPF. Now, what is ineligibility? There's a bunch of them, but anyone who materially contributed to the insolvency of the member firm, obviously, if you contributed to the you know bankruptcy or insolvency of that firm, you're probably not going to get your money back. So again, that would be like, the Bernie Madoff, his employees, someone that contributed to that, they're not getting any of their money back. Like you were part of the scheme, uh, you know, you lost your money. Directors and general partners of the member firm, some shareholders and limited partners with 5% or more of the member firm or other IROC member firms or firms registered with security. So if one firm, you know, has dealings with another one and causes it to lose, it, they won't be covered either. But again, 99.9% .9 of you watching this video don't fall under that. So you would qualify for that. Now, one thing to note that I read here that's quite important is there is no requirement that you live or be a citizen of Canada. So that's really important. So a lot of you I know plan to retire abroad or you're maybe not a Canadian citizen investing in Canada. It is not a requirement to be in Canada or be a Canadian citizen to qualify for CPF. I think that's a hugely important note to make in all of this. Lastly, I think it's important to know that CIPF and any insurance protection in the investing world isn't going to cover for certain losses, right? So it's there for your protection if the member firm, the investment firm goes insolvent or something like that. But at the end of the day, they're not there to protect you if you lose money. Like that's part of investing. There is a risk that you take when you invest money, whether it's in stocks or bonds or real estates or mortgages, whatever you're investing in, there's inherent risk to that. So just a quick list, you know, they do not cover losses resulting from any of the following. A drop in value of your investments for any reason, investments that were not suitable for you, fraudulent or other misrepresentations that were made to you, misleading information that was given to you, important information that was not disclosed to you, poor investment advice, the insolvency or default of the company or organization that issued the security and security is held directly by the client. So at the end of the day, you have to understand how this insurance protection works. You know, big level, let's put it into two buckets. Bucket one is the investment company becomes insolvent, right? So if National Bank became insolvent, then that's when CIPF would kick in. If my investments at BCV held through National Bank went from 100,000 to 80,000, that's investment risk, that's investment loss, that's not covered. So just be aware of how this works. The purpose of this video is really be aware of where you're investing. Where is your money being held? Who's the person holding that? Where's the protection? CIPF is a small piece of the big pie. 
And you need to understand where your slice of pie is and how risky that is. How much, you know, jalapenos are on your piece of uh, pizza there. Uh, and if there's too much, you may want to move over to the, you know, the pepperoni or ham pineapple. Because at the end of the day, a lot of you are invested in companies, in structures that have a high, high chance of blowing up in your face and potentially costing you retirement, setting you way back. If you're invested at a big mutual fund company, a big bank, an investment firm, whatever, you have some sort of investor protection. You might want to do research beyond CIPF to figure out what that is. But a lot of you, again, are doing these side investment projects and, oh yeah, I'm invested with my buddy Tom over here and he's got this thing. Understand the risks that that carries. Yes, there could be really high upside, but there could be you know, the downside of zero where all your money's wiped out. If you're making that investment, understanding that it may go to zero, that's fine. That's part of your kind of overall investment strategy. That's okay. If it fits within your plan and you're okay with that, perfect. It's when you're not aware of that. And I think as you get older, you start to get more phone calls, more investment things thrown across your plate because you become more vulnerable. There's a lot of research done, vulnerability in seniors. And again, I know a lot of you watching this video are age 45 plus. And trust me, 45 is not a senior because I'm getting close to that and I'm not a senior. But you know, if you're in your 60s, 70s, 80s, you're, as you're getting older, you do become, and you may not realize it, and this is a trigger, you may not realize it, but you're becoming more vulnerable and people will come at you from different angles and try and manipulate you. My great grandpa died many, many years ago. And when he passed away, he had something, I don't know the exact number, but it was like 60 or 80 or even 100 subscriptions, monthly subscriptions to different magazines. And basically someone, you know, <laughs> that got connected with him just every day came to his house and sold him a new magazine, new magazine. And he was spending thousands of dollars on magazine subscriptions back. This would have been back in the 90s. You know, when he passed away, my grandma realized like, you've been wasting a ton of my hit stacks of magazines. And again, vulnerability of seniors. Someone took advantage of him. Again, this happens in many areas of life, but your investment portfolio is such a huge part of your retirement that you really need to take a step back. Now, if you feel like you're in a position where you're becoming vulnerable, you don't know who to trust. Again, I've said this before, create accountability, find people that you can trust and build that kind of network around you. So when things come across your plate, you can lean on them, bounce ideas off them and just get proper advice before you make any decision. Thanks so much for joining us in this video. I really hope it helped. And I really hope it makes you take a step back. Where are your investments? You know, I talk a lot about fees and returns and this and that on the channel and how this kind of all plays in. But I think investor protection is such a massive part of that overall equation. So do your homework, make sure you're, you're you know, safe where you are, or at least understand where you are, and that it fits into your overall financial plan. So thanks for joining us in this video. We'll see you in the next one.